Hi, my name's Danny and these are my Diecast Disasters. Today we will be restoring this Matchbox Super Kings number K10 car transporter. These were produced by Lesney England from 1976 until 1981. Let's take a closer look at the cab. A lot of the paint is missing. Chrome is missing from the black plastic front grille. The windows are quite scuffed and scratched. The fifth wheel trailer coupling is quite worn. The horns on the top of the vehicle are in great condition. And the lights, which are part of the windscreen, are just a little rough on top. The wheels and axles are overall in good condition. The front axle is a little bent and will need to be straightened. Both the base and the cab casting are in great condition. Having a look at the trailer now. As you can see the paint is very chipped. There is a top front axle missing which holds on at this upper level. The rear gate opens and the top level pivots down so that the cars can drive up. The hydraulic pistons have come apart. Some of the small tabs used to hold the piston rods to the casting are broken. The castings are in good condition. The rear wheels are a little rough, but not too bad. The pins holding the piston cases to the base are very rusty and will need to be removed.
we will start by drilling out the rivets holding the trailer coupling on. I use a drill which is a tiny bit larger than the rivet to remove the top of it. I take care not to drill any further than I need to and damage the plastic. Once the rivets are drilled, I can gently pry off the plastic part with a small screwdriver. Now I will turn it over to remove the single rivet holding the cab to the base. The base and cab parts were held together with a single rivet and a small tab at the front and come apart very easily once drilled. The windscreen just pops out. I now drill out the rivets holding the horns on. These are then also gently pried off. Next are the very shallow rivets holding the wheels to the base of the trailer. Here we see the axles are in great condition with only a little bit of oxidation. I use this grinding bit with a small shaped tip to remove the axle from the trailer. There is not a lot of room so I must be careful not to slip and damage the casting.
Once the tip is ground down, the axle is removed easily. Notice the small silver patch where I accidentally grazed the casting with the grinder. The pins holding on the piston cases are very small and quite difficult to get to. I use this round burr on my rotary tool to grind them down. The burr tended to bounce around a bit, so again I had to be careful not to scratch the casting. I use the same method to remove the piston rods. There is more room to remove the axles from the cab, so I can use a flat ended grinding tool. I give the plastic parts a wash in some warm soapy water. I also wash the main trailer casting as it was very filthy. Here are the metal parts ready for paint stripping. I thoroughly coat the parts in paint stripper and then leave them for about half an hour. I can then use a small tub of water and my wife's toothbrush to scrub off the peeling paint. This process was repeated three times for most of the parts and four times for the large trailer casting. Here are the stripped parts. You can see quite a lot of oxidization on them. There are many small patches of rust colored oxidization, 
particularly on the trailer parts. While inspecting the cab, I notice a small casting burr in the rear window, so I remove it with a small file. I use some steel wool to remove the oxidisation from the cab. I use a combination of wire brush on my rotary tool and steel wool to clean up the trailer. There are a lot of different shapes and surfaces on the trailer casting, so it took me quite a long time.
the same method was used to clean the base of the cab. Again, this took quite some time. The recessed area under the cab base was tricky to clean. Now it is time to drill and tap the rivet post on the cab. I use a 1.7mm drill. I use a 256 tap to cut a thread in the hole. A 256 button head screw is fitted. Here are the parts cleaned and ready for painting. The pieces are primed with Tamiya Fine Surface Primer. Here they are after priming. It is a good time to have a look at the details on the castings. The details on the castings are quite large and they have a futuristic Thunderbirds style to them. Whilst the castings do not have many small fine details, I did notice this tiny Exide logo on the battery.
trailer is a really neat, interesting casting. However, there are a few areas which I feel have been modelled a bit roughly. I decided to use spray cans rather than my airbrush for this model, as it is quite large. The parts were given three coats of colour and two coats of clear. Here are the parts after painting. They are looking much better. I feel that the aluminium colour went on better than the red and really looks fantastic. Now to clean up the trailer coupling. I use some fine sandpaper to remove the rough edges and smooth out any dented, pitted areas. Once I have it looking a bit tidier, I dip the part in self-shining floor polish. I then leave it to set without rinsing it too much so that the polish pools in some of the rougher and more pitted areas. As it sets, it will help to smooth them out. Make sure you remove any air bubbles. Next, I will remove the pins from the piston casing. I use pliers to squash the ends of the pins. Here are the piston cases. They are a bit scratched and dented. Again, I just use some fine sandpaper to clean them up.
Once they are sanded down, I give them a quick polish. They are also treated with floor shine. Now it was time to fix the piston arms. These were very small and fiddly and I tried a couple of methods to fix them, including JB Weld and also super glue and baking soda. Both of these methods ultimately proved too weak and the parts would always break again when pulling the piston rod in and out of the casing. So here is the method that I eventually worked out. I used a small amount of super glue to initially glue the parts into place. Here I am using a smaller piece of wire to apply a little bit more super glue to the join. Now the pieces are glued in the correct position, but they are very weak joins. So I am going to reinforce them. Here I have taken a paper clip and beaten the end out of it as flat as I can. I have then drilled a tiny hole the same size as the hole in the top of the piston rod. I use a small nail to help keep the pieces lined up. Now I mark out where I will want to cut the flattened paper clip. I use a cutting disc on my rotary tool to cut the part to size. Using the nail again to keep the pieces aligned, I can attach my small steel reinforcing plate to the tabs on the top of the piston rods.
Now the plate is attached, I can use small amounts of super glue and baking soda to fill the gaps and reinforce it. I can then file and sand the piece to shape. This process is repeated on the other side. The joins are now very strong. They look scruffy now, so I mask off the rods and give them a quick coat of paint. The chrome on the interior of the cab was in very good condition as it had always been protected. However, the chrome on the front grille is completely worn off. I use a chrome pen to reapply chrome to the worn areas. The horns on the top of the cab are in great condition, but I decided to clean up some of the casting birds that had been left behind on them. I then give them a coat of chrome. The 
windscreen is in good condition, but it is quite scuffed. And there is also a small gouge in the front. The black lines in the windscreen seem to be a contaminant in the casting. I begin by lightly sanding the gouged area. I then proceed to give the rest of the windscreen a light sanding to remove the scuffs and scratches. I smooth off the scuffed tops of the lights. After sanding, I give the windscreen a good polish. Last of all is a dip in self-shining floor polish. From my experience, there is not much you can do to tidy up damaged tyres. These tyres were not in too bad a shape. So I just use my chrome pen to redo the silver areas. I give the rear wheels the same treatment. Here is the bent front axle. I will simply put it in my vise and straighten it with some pliers. After quite a few different stages, here are the parts of the cab 
ready for reassembly. I begin by putting the wheels onto the cab base. I use my drill press and Marty's method to round the end of the axles and hold the wheels on. I also use this method to refit the axles holding the top level and the rear gate to the trailer. Now I put the horns onto the top of the cab. I use a couple of small dabs of JB Quick Weld to secure the horns. Press the trailer coupling onto the base. I now remove the colour matched screw from the cab. The windscreen drops in. Then the interior slips in and is held in place with the rivet post. Finally, we place the cab assembly back on the base. Now for the trailer. I begin by putting the rear wheels in place. The black plastic axle covering is pressed back on. With the top level and rear gate reattached, the last thing to do is to reinstall the hydraulic pistons. This required me to make some very small pins and end pieces. I used 1.6mm button head nails. I used a cutting disc on my rotary tool to cut the small head of the nail in half. This left me with the nail with a small spread end and also a small end cap slice. I use my hammer to flatten the rough end of the nail and make it look a bit neater.
The nail is then cut to the desired length. Remember to hold a cup underneath to catch the small pieces as they are very difficult to find if they fall on the floor. I can now use my pins to reattach the pistons. A tiny drop of super glue is added to the end of the pin. Then with some tweezers I carefully press the end cap into position. The other end of the pistons were even more fiddly. Well, finally our K10 car transporter is reassembled and ready to be revealed. Here's a quick reminder of what we started with. A real die-cast disaster. And here is our finished product. As you can see, our old K10 is looking much smarter. It is great fun to have the top layer reattached to the trailer and the hydraulics working. Now it can be loaded up with more cars, which it can transport off to Danny's Diecast Disasters for restoration. Thanks heaps everyone for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe.